Even at this point of the game, I see a lot of people rocking flashes, stuns, and heartbeats, which is fine, do your thing, but I would really love to bring you guys to the light. Yo, what is up guys? Today, I am probably bringing you guys my most anticipated and long overdue video on this YouTube channel, and it is Moving With Purpose Part 2. So I dropped my first ever movement guide in the earlier days of her dance. A lot of people seem to enjoy that, so I'm stoked to bring you guys a more updated version and take you a little bit deeper inside the movement plays as a Warzone player, especially for Caldera, because as you know, totally different map. Obviously, we're still working with the same system, which is nice. I love the movement system but how you finesse that movement on this map is completely different than Verdansk. I'm not gonna spend too much time on the basics because again, I did cover those mainly in the first ever movement guide. I will brush over some of those to start off today, but my main goal today is to really help you guys actually become better players. And what I mean by that is I've seen so many different tip videos that offer pretty decent tips and tricks up until it's time to go against another solid player and i feel like that's when they start to lose their value they just don't hold as much weight anymore and i would love to be able to help you guys bridge that gap and with that we'll start this guide off right all right so to start off the guide we are going to be talking and working the basics we're going to be going over slide canceling b hopping shouldering and snaking so first things first is the slide cancel now obviously everyone wants a very smooth slide cancel but i still see a lot of players that do the fast abrupt slide cancels, I call it the fake crack, where it's so counterproductive because it's gonna take you years to get where you wanna go. And on top of that, your fingers are gonna be so sore by the end of it. Next, I see a lot of people do the drawn out slides where they just you literally use their whole slide and they either sprint out of that or they like do like an awkward little hop like it's Apex or something. Both of those are completely wrong. The whole purpose of slide canceling is to move as fast as possible, as efficiently as possible the entire time you're moving which a lot of people do a slide slide jump which i do as well but i kind of do a little freestyle sometimes i'll jump and land into like slides and I'll only slide once uh, i kind of mix it up a little bit where this is what my slide cancels look like I also why why a lot keep in mind guys i do play claw so a lot of the times when i have a smg out i do why why and it has become kind of part of my slide cancels it just is what it is it's just what i do it makes me feel comfortable but now Depending on where I'm at is what kind of affects my slide cancels. So if I'm somewhere where I think there's gonna be someone close or maybe I'm just in a close range area, I'll do a lot more it's just single slides and jump into those. And the reason I do that is to keep my gun ready to go where if I do happen to have someone kind of like challenge me, I'm, I'm ready to go, right? I'm instantly jumping straight into the gunfight versus finding myself in an awkward situation trying to pull up out of a slide or something like that. Where again, like if I know someone's in this building, you'll definitely see me do a lot of single slides. That way, if he goes to challenge me, I'm ready to go and I can even jump straight into a B-hop if need be. Um, which leads me to B-hopping. So let's say I do push this building, someone's here, and let's say he's hugging this tight corner. There's multiple different B-hops you can do. You can either go side to side or do the little fadeaways at diagonals both have their reasons to use them starting off i'm going to show you guys why you would ever use a diagonal so let's say i push this building there's a guy playing this angle tight here now doing a normal b-hop would make no sense in this situation from side to side because by, notice by the time i'm jumping out he is going to see my body for multiple frames before i ever have time to lock on him so he's able to land plenty of first shots war zone you die very fast you always want to be the first one to land shots so in these in this situation here i would definitely not do a side to side b hop because again he's just gonna land way too many shots on me before i can even shoot him so this is where the diagonal b hops come into play because this allows me to ads on target before i even get there so when i'm jumping out by the time by the time i'm eclipsing my cover and he i'm starting to enter his line of sight i am already shooting back at him and i'm already ads on him he is now left to try to track me versus he's standing stationary now he has to try to track me and i'm already started hitting him and dealing damage as soon as i eclipse his screen here versus somewhere over here so again use the diagonal if he's the close right it's gonna look something like this here now, if he is on this head glitch here, a diagonal is not going to work because what's going to happen? You're just be hopping into no man's land. He's going to fry you. Now, if it's a bot, you're in a bot lobby, it's going to work. But the thing is, today's video is all about showing you guys how to outbeat decent players. I feel like a lot of people get nice with movement. And they start getting too flashy with it, which again, it works in the bot lobbies. But when you start going against other decent players or solid sweaty players, it's just not going to work. They can shoot back. They know what to look for. They know they're used to these things. They have good movement as well. So you got to keep your movement tight, efficient. You want to flow in your environment. You want to use your environment as much as possible. So for here, if someone is on this head glitch, I'm just going to be hop. This is where I would be hop straight across. Now, obviously in a situation here, I'm not going to kill them be hopping across. 
but what i would use this for is to do damage before i push in so i would be hop here to do a, a little bit of damage and then i can instantly slide straight into reach alley maybe even slide straight into something like this which again leads me into slide canceling or throwing shoulders so slide canceling into a gunfight um i see a lot of people will just slide out and you're just no man's land all over again so if you're sliding into a gunfight if you know someone's here you think a player's here try to try to end your slide cancel at the end of the cover here so even if someone's there you can instantly start shooting and jump straight back into cover shoulders are great for keeping information they're great for clearing spots so you don't open yourself up too much you can get the info and duck straight back in so that's how i would approach situations while slide canceling keep it tight again mold to your environment that will also lead us to snaking so let's say a guy is playing this head glitch here and he fries me i lay down and start plating i see a lot of people will just plate and totally give up information on the gunfight that is literally the worst thing you could possibly do because now when you stand back up and you're fully plated you have no idea where this guy's gone he could have went right he could have bumped on the here he could have bumped over here and now you're left to stand up and try to find him all over again which means more than likely he's gonna beam you again if you do survive that beaming just know he's coming at this point he's already bumped to a new location even if he doesn't come you're just you're stuck in an endless loop you'll you're never gonna get out of it versus if he does damage to you as you're plating keep you know what i mean keep keep snaking or even keep throwing shoulders as you're plating just so you can keep info so that way you are already centered ready to go by the time you're done being healed by the time you're done plating back up so it's Enemy instead of having to find him, then lock on. You've already seen him. Let's say he bumped over to the shack. I can already start centering on his body. So by the time I'm up, it's just about shooting and not necessarily just locking on. All right, so this clip here actually has two different styles of snaking to show you guys. Really the same thing. It's just two different ways I'm using it. All right, so here it comes down. I'm in the middle of reloading. I spot a player. And as I'm jumping to cover, you guys will see I've noticed two players so far. I see the guy at the crane and I see this guy, which looks like he's going to be running to my far right to play a heady. It's fine. I'm quickly going to play for this left side box heady because as you can see, I have this heady here and I have this shielding me from the right side. So I'm going to ISO this guy at the crane for my first pick. I center my screen and pop up and I'm directly centered on his chest. As I'm fighting this though, I notice this third guy looks like he's going to just fly at me, right? So I do as much damage as I can. I wasn't able to get up, get off the pick, but that's okay. As I'm snaking, I'm gonna go ahead and center my screen for where this close player will be. Beautiful, as soon as I come up, I'm already centered on him. I don't have to readjust, I don't have to track. I'm already there, it's time to just shoot. But as I'm finding him again, I'm gonna go ahead and snake again. I wanna shield myself from Crane from the right side as well so I can easily get this knock. I pretty much pre-fire Crane. I pre-fire close right heady, he's not there. Deal a little bit more damage to Crane, so I know he doesn't have plates at this point if he hasn't played it by now. But now I'm just going to direct my focus towards right side over here. Able to get that knock as well. And even though I'm very weak, I am going to play extremely aggressive on this simply because I have reason to believe he doesn't have plates either. And I'm not going to lie, that was a little closer than expected. Either way, you guys got to see in this fight as well. Um, snaking saved my life plenty of times. Again, we center our screens for the guy at the crane first. And the reason I did that was because I had the box heading for him and then the box that was standing up vertically to shield myself from the player on the right. That's when we noticed the player is pushing us. Drop shot, isolated myself completely from anybody to pick up that kill. He pretty much opened the fight up for us, which was nice. Um, and then from there, pre fired a couple locations, played for the guy on the right, picked him up, and then last but not least, pushed that last guy because I knew he didn't have plates because he never ended up plating midway through the fight. All right, so for our second part of the guide, we're going to be talking about doors. I'm going to be explaining how clutch they really are whether you're on the defensive or offensive and show you guys all the possibilities that you have with these in your close range engagements now i will say doors are mainly a mental thing they're mainly just playing mind tricks obviously because there's not too much there there's really not much when you think about it. i know logically you guys are like wow you open and close a door how are they that clutch but these are great for just using them for mind tricks outsmarting your opponent really thinking two steps ahead um while you are in those close range engagements so the first play i do a lot is when if i'm in a gunfight if i need to reload or um or if i'm kind of hurt if i'm kind of hurt and i see they're being pretty aggressive on me i'll go ahead and shut the door and as they're running towards the door i'll open it and what that does is if someone runs to try to break through a door the full sprint and you open it it'll actually shove them to the side so if there's a player pushing me, it's gonna shove them to the side. It actually forces their face into the wall. 
And a lot of times, if I'm done plating or reloading by then, I'll go ahead and shut it and reach out. And I, I pretty much shut the door and reach out at that point. They are, they are left to try to turn around and track me and find me. Um, they, they are left to turn around and now try to track me, which I'm going to land first shots. Going to come out on top. Um, majority of the time or next what you can also do is if you don't want to be aggressive and shut the door and now you become the aggressor you can actually just shut it and just be ready for them to come out you know what i mean now you've now you've played it up you've got your extra second or two which you needed to like reset for the gunfight now you know they're going to come through you already know you can start shooting them through the door or whatever it is um now that you know for sure they're going to come through or they may not and then if they don't even better now you can wrap around play it up do what you need to do but right here i'm gonna try to show you guys one of the one of the door tricks here. Primary LZ highlighted. Extract is standing by. And that one right there was just a quick faint. That's a great example of a super easy one, and that is literally running through a door and just instant shutting it behind you and instantly reach outing. So I show that I'm running inside and instantly come back and reach out. It catches people off guard a lot more than you realize. Obviously, we caught that guy off guard. He, he thought I was running inside a plate up to get away, whatever he thought. Um, and it gave me an advantage where he was done ADSing, not going to reach out the engagement. Again, running inside wherever you're at, coming back in, instantly reach out. And so once he's a door closing, the last thing they expect is for you to run back out. More than likely, they think you're either running completely or you're running inside to plate up, reload, whatever, and they're still going to be aggressive. And that's where you catch them on those awkward timings, and that's where the mind games come in. All right, so this next play is one for if you need to heal up, you're extremely, extremely hurt. You can't just open the door to force them um, to the side because you're like one HP. You need way more time than just a second to like throw a plate on or two. You need to get away. And what I do is I start fighting. Um, and then if they put me one HP, I react, I close the door. And once someone breaks your armor and puts you pretty hurt, if you close the door, they're going to be very aggressive, right? You know, they're coming for you. And if they were close by, what I like to do is actually open the door as I'm plating. So I'll show you what I do here. Let me, let me put myself one shot. But what I'll do is let's say I was fighting a guy. He was like right here. He just put me one shot, right? I'm going to shut the door. Um, and which is going to make him be aggressive. So I'm going to shut the door and start plating up, instantly open it back up and start retreating. I don't know where this guy just came from. Fake going inside. Give myself time to reload. Yeah, and so what that's going to do is now for this building it's not going to work the best because this window is here but what this is going to do is the, once they put their gun down and they start running at you they see the door shut they know they just broke your armor the door shuts they're going to come in for the kill and once that door opens again they don't know if you're ego challenging or what the game plan is right this guy loves me huh they have no idea if you're going to ego chow or what the situation is so will it stop them in their tracks maybe but even if it doesn't it gives you a plenty of time to create some distance and some space so you can reset the gunfight and heal up it works 99 percent of the time i don't think it's ever not worked even when players i've had players super super close to me i'm talking very close i shut the door reopen it and they'll stand there for half a second that gives me plenty of time to make it back to the front side of the building where here i can start finessing this side play back up again and re-engage uh, with full plates and reset the gunfight so as crazy as it sounds, it works. So the next one I'm going to show you guys is a simple door faint. I do this one all the time. This one works all the time as well. This one's great for breaking cameras. And all you have to do is if you see someone's playing aggressive on you and you're very hurt, you shut the door. But as you're shutting the door, you want to show your show them that you're running one way and then instantly dart back the next way. So when they come through the door, they are they are already in their mind made up that you went to the right. When in reality, you're over here and now they have to turn their entire camera. So in full speed, let's say I got put one shot. I'm going to start plating. I'm going to shut the door, show that I went this way or even let's say I'm fighting. I just got hurt. I'm going to show I ran that way, instantly slide back. And when they come through the door, they're coming through like this, right? So either they're not going to see you at all or they're going to catch a glimpse of you. But now they have to literally turn all the way around. You're already shooting them in the back. You now have the advantage. You're landing for shots you're going to kill that player the majority of the time. It's very rare that you don't. Um, you can even just literally break the camera. You don't even have to do anything excessive, right? Again, throw a shoulder, slide back across, shoot them in their back as they go to chase in. Very easy play, just a quick little juke play. Again, doors are all about mind games, so keep that in mind. And logically, some of these things you might think he's just saying BS, but I promise you, especially against decent players as well, 
they don't really even expect it you can catch so many people in awkward timings um to come out in these gunfights on top a lot all right guys so for our next topic we are going to be going over finessing buildings and houses in caldera so even back in verdance this was a huge way to break down team fights but now in caldera it's even better because you can pretty much mantle any roof you want to now which even just one extra element doesn't sound like a ton but it truly is because so many players don't really expect you to do that and if you catch the right timings on hitting those roof mantles to use the roof as a heady to your advantage I promise you, you will get so many initial picks to really level out the gunfight or level out the team fight. But overall, the key factors on how to play these buildings stays the same. And the keys are know the layouts, know what kind of rooms you're working with, what are the windows, what are the angles, how many levels are in the building, it's a two story, three story, etc. And where are the roof mantles or jumps at? Some roofs you can pretty much mantle wherever, which is nice. Other roofs, you do have to know the jump spots. Either way, um, make sure you are very familiar with your layout. So when it comes time and you're getting forced out by four guys, you're not having to think in the moment, where do I go next? Is you're pretty much working off instinct because you're very familiar with your surroundings and you know exactly where you need to be next for that next crucial pick. Another key factor is never challenge from the same spot. So I see a lot of people will get a pick and then they continue to look for more picks from that same spot. And it's, it should be common sense to think, especially if they're decent players, if you get a kill from bottom left window, second you kill him and you get your full he's gonna call you out he's gonna ping you even maybe and his teammates are gonna be looking at you maybe not all of them but at least one teammate guarantee will be ads in that window and you die so incredibly fast in warzone that half of his job is already done if you walk inside of his crosshair now all he has to do is shoot you and you're dead pretty much instantly so the main goal is the second you get a full you need to be relocating to a new angle to challenge from i mean like instantly you need to be darting somewhere else playing very unpredictable is huge playing fast pace is huge and even if they do make it inside of your building you're gonna be overwhelming them don't play slow don't hesitate don't think too much and i promise you this will be the easiest wipes of your life but instead of just putting words to all this i am going to show you guys a couple clips of everything about what i mean and from there we'll move on to our last and final topic the stems all right so in this clip i'm going to be breaking down a very simple 1v4 for you guys um, I am using a building for this, so it is kind of house finessing as well. But this just goes to show you how prioritizing your kills, kind of planning things out, using a building for your advantage makes 1v4 super, super easy and simple. But let's check it out. As I'm crossing, I don't know if you guys could have seen it. I know this isn't the best quality. I am using my VOD. Um, but there was two players I've spotted so far. I have not seen the other two, but there's I saw a guy running towards his porch which is him like in a blurry state And there's a second one here So I'm gonna go ahead and slide over and slide into this head glitch I'm gonna start shooting this guy because I know this guy's running in the house, right? He's gonna go inside. I don't need to worry about him So I start picking up my first kill the second I get the knock I don't go for the thirst I'm I'm gonna quickly throw my gas grenade at the door. This guy's obviously gonna come out to chow me Which he does he runs into the gas I'm able to put in one shot um at this point i do want to play this kill right i do want to play this 1v1 because i don't know where the other two are and i already have them pretty weak my gas grenade is kind of in the way so i'm going to take my time here i'm going to go for a c4 to see if i can get an easy knock maybe he backed all the way up to plate up which he did not unfortunately so i take my time i reload i do want to force this asap force it i get the knock and while i was doing that we did hear the rescue so i'm going to look out to see what i can see get a quick knock try to pre-fire he doesn't bait, so I'm just gonna take my kill, which does right. end up forcing him to come up after I get the full. All right, now, so now, I just heard their teammate running in. It sounded like he was in the bottom floor. So I'm jumping on the backside of the building to start plating up, right? I'm super hurt. There's no way I'm ego telling that. Jump on the backside to get my plates off. I'm assuming he ran up the stairs to chow me, so I'm, I'm gonna assume the front porch is safe, which it is. At this point, I close the door. Uh, I do hear him outside. I'm gonna go ahead and head back inside, reload. Now my doors are shut, so now I'll know when he does decide to push, right? But at this time, I try to fake like I'm going out front. As soon as I do that, I hear the back door hit, so I take the roof. And now I'm in a really good spot. I still haven't got my thirst yet, so I know this guy's knocked somewhere. I don't know where, but I know he's outside knocked. And now I've heard that guy come in the house. I can pretty much stand on the roof and bait for him to come back outside to look for me and try to res his teammate. And here he comes right here. He comes flying out because obviously he's gonna go for the res. Able to put him one shot. I'm not gonna super chase though. I'm gonna stay right here where I have a line of sight of everything. He actually goes to the second floor. We're able to pick up that knock. No way. 
Yes, sir. We get our full. This guy, he's gonna ego from Gulag. And boom, a quick, easy wipe right there. Again, I know that wasn't anything spectacular, but that just goes to show me isolating that first guy on the heady, able to pick up that knock, didn't go quickly for the thirst, went ahead and prenated the door with the gas grenade, knowing that guy is gonna come out, which is, that's one of those situations where it is a first kill that will lead up to chain kills, force the ISO inside, and from there, pretty much played ISOs for the rest of that fight. So again, using a building, playing smart, isolating yourself in different ways makes these team wipes super super easy all right so let's discuss the most important skill set to have and that is knowing how to isolate your gunfights and team fights understanding how to finesse multiple players in really any given scenario is what separates the best in the world from just the sweats now there's a couple different things that go into this obviously starting with your movement ability and your finesse ability, but there's a couple others I want to touch on as well. So obviously movement is a part of finessing, but finessing is not movement. I feel like a lot of people confuse these as the same thing when they're truly not. Movement ability is your raw talent with the movement mechanics in the game. So that's talking slide cancels, B hops, snaking, whatever it may be. Um, and you use these in your finesse abilities. So finesse is really your knowledge on how to use those uh, mechanics to mold yourself to your environment you want to pretty much be like water. You want to be fluid. You want to kind of flow through your environment. Use really everything to your advantage. And I'm going to show you guys in game right now what I mean by this. All right, guys. So for this clip right here, I'm going to be breaking down how to isolate a team. This is going to be a 1v3 up at the barn at the very top of fields. You guys will notice I do have a UAV pop. I have three spotted on the UAV. There could be a fourth that's ghosted. But for now, all I know that there is three people up at this barn. As I'm pushing... I'm able to spot one. I'm going to go for that initial pick. That would have been a huge pick. We did not end up getting it. So I'm just going to go ahead and bump up to the close wall now. As you see, this guy completely caught me off guard. Start to dance with him a little bit. Able to shield myself from that other player. And I'm going to quickly dip back inside to play it up. But like I said, this guy caught me completely off guard. He was able to do a ton of damage to me before I was able to fight him. Which is where I'm having to constantly try to shimmy. I'm, I want to try to break his camera and force him to slide past me or slide to me, which then I can break his camera. He doesn't do so, he stays pretty disciplined. And once that happens, I start getting shot in the back. Now here I know I have to force this gunfight in front of me. There's no way I would've turned around and gun the guy behind me. So I have to force this gunfight and win this one in front. But I also know I cannot cut to the right because this guy behind me will still have a line of sight, right? So what I wanna do is go left of the pillar and shield my backside on the other front side of the pillar and try to win my one-on-one -on -one fight. And then from there, slide over to the wall and then get to the barn to play it up. So here I'm able to isolate the fight. Um, and notice as soon as I got that knock, I was very still. I didn't do any extra sliding. There's no flashy B hops. There's no excessive movement at all. It is very clean, concise, straight to my cover. So where now I'm shielded and I can quickly make my escape into the barn to play it up. Also, again, notice I did not go up those stairs. One, I did know that guy was second floor earlier. And then also, that room is so wide open to where if that player was to chase me, he would still have a line of sight of myself running up the stairs. If I went straight to the door on the backside, he would have had the line of sight as well. So my best bet is to cut to the right and try to break his line of sight as fast as possible so I can continue plating. Able to do that, which is perfect. And now I'm going to take height. I want to take height over the situation. I know they haven't res yet, or at least hopefully they haven't. And now I can look down on the situation, which just gets the res off. I'm going to try to bank a nade to do some damage. Wasn't able to do so. Go to now hold this back door. Now, I, my UAV has gone, but I was able to catch a glimpse of that player running to the right, which is going to cue me to go check my right window. And I actually end up catching one here. Fast little knock. I don't go straight for the fool though, right? Still don't want to go straight for the fool because how close they're playing i would rather back up and, and reassess the situation again which i'm glad i did because this player comes zooming at me again I'm gonna quickly go back isolate myself on this front side of the building i choose this side of the building because I'm, i've already spotted three players on the right hand side and i know there's no way anyone's back here so i should have time to play it up and this honestly works out perfectly wow, what the is with those two this ends up working perfectly. So a lot of times, the more you finesse, the more you dance around, you will catch players overextending and making wild plays. And I'm assuming while the second guy was rezzing, this guy decided to put a lot of pressure on me. He knew he did a lot of damage to me. He knows it's just me. Um, so he just tried to fly at me to put pressure so they could get that res off, which again, allows me to isolate him. And now I can finally get my first knock of the situation or knock and full, excuse me. 
here quickly slide back to the front side of the building isolating myself again to reload catch this player second floor by himself now i'm gonna hit an instant stim i have no idea no one shot i didn't hear anything but i want to stim to be to be able to elude or be evasive of the next player just in case they were holding hands they weren't thankfully which is nice um, but i was able to quickly reposition and now played up um, and get ready for my last and final gunfight of the situation oh my god and we easily broke them down now obviously it took a lot of different knocks before i could get the end result but notice how i never got too aggressive i was constantly repositioning constantly more so dragging them to bring the fight to me especially on that initial engagement i was able to isolate that first pick of the pillar slide inside um, and a lot of dancing around it is a lot of dancing around a lot of repositioning but notice how clean it can be when you're constantly dragging the one-on-ones to yourself once i finally got that first knock in full i know it was multiple knocks later but once we got that that pretty much opens up the situation to a 1v2 which your odds are very very good in my opinion all right so our next topic i'll be going over are the stems now stems are my personal favorite edition of warzone probably ever simply because it added a small skill gap that i've been wanting for so so long back in verdansk if you ran into a building and got shot in the back by a camper or if you were just caught in no man's land rotating you were pretty much dead i mean unless they absolutely choke shots you can pretty much say ggs only let's go ahead and load into the next one but now this allows you to either slide out of the room with the movement boost and health boost or even evade uh force miss shots on the open get to cover actually re-engage into a real gunfight versus just dying because they saw you and you didn't see them. All sweaty, decent players have an understanding of how long it takes to slide cancel from one angle to the next. So if you're able to hit stems to either get to that angle a lot faster than they would anticipate, or maybe even use them to take an angle they think would take entirely too long, there's no way he goes there. Take that angle, shoot them in the side, whatever it may be, the more you can allow yourself to hit the first shots in a gunfight, the more successful you're gonna be. I'll show you guys these close range gunfights and how to use your stems to come out more successful, whether you are breaking cameras, timings, or using them as that get out of jail free card. All right, so this clip here, guys, is a beautiful example why stems are such a bailout, and especially in the close range. Now, don't get it twisted. I was still, you'll notice, I'm still playing my cover extremely tight here. I'm not showing too much of myself. I'm showing just enough when I need to. I'm not sly canceling everywhere. I'm not b-hopping everywhere. Um, there's no flashy movement here. I keep it very concise, very clean, and that's what keeps me alive up until I need that stem, which again, does save me during this wipe. So, I do get this kill here. Now, I'm incredibly one-shot, and I know I'm going to get third-partied. They've already shot at me. So, as soon as I've seen that guy, I've heard the second, and we see the other two, right? We see the other two a little bit further away. As Since I saw the guy on the bridge, I'm going to grab this gun and try to chow the guy on this other side of the box. If I fight the guy on the right... I'm going to get shot from the guy, the potential players that are lacking behind. So I'd rather try to isolate this guy on the left first. As I go to do that, he ends up sliding to hold hands with his teammate. As I'm fighting this guy, I'm, I'm keeping my back tucked to the crane, right? I don't want to go too far left and expose my backside to the players on the bridge. I'm kind of keeping myself hidden in between the box and the crane. As soon as I get that knock, I don't want to fight the guy behind me. I want to fight the player in front of me. I'm already facing that direction. But I'm going to go ahead and pre-stim because I have a feeling I'm going to need it. So I pre-stim. Once I do that, I instantly reach out because I know this guy's camera is going to be broken, which is completely shattered. And the other player was going to try to pinch me. Right here, I'm going to pick up this kill and I'm going to slide straight back tight into this box corner here. Now, I don't really have... I thought I had a second weapon. I did not. So I'm kind of stuck in an awkward point where I'm trying to shimmy left and right. Able to break this guy's ankles again, which gives me plenty of time to reload. From here, I'm going to ISO Chow again. Thankfully, they split the pinch. Broke his camera, picked up the kill. Played it safe and backed up to the crane. And finally got a lunge for the first time in my life. But again, this clip is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful example of why stems are such a bailout in these close range fights. Still play your movement tight. Play tight on your cover. Use it as much as you can. Isolate yourself. Play in the shadows. Shadow these objects. And um, you can pull off world star wipes like this. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you found it valuable and useful to your own gameplay. If you did, I would greatly, greatly appreciate if you left a like on the video. And if you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Until next time, I'll see you all soon.